Hello lads and welcome to the video and yes I said lads and the only reason I'm saying that is because the other day I looked at my viewer analytics and 0.2% of that was female. That's that's 0.2%, that's not even a percent, that's 0.2, so it's not even a full female. So work that one out, don't even know how that works. It's someone who's not, is only... 0.2% female, so that just goes to prove that Warhammer gets girls. 0.2% of girls anyway, so lads, virgins, there's still 0.2% of hope out there. So you're telling me there's a chance. Anyway, let's get into the video. So if you watched my recent video on the Grimdark leather tutorial with all the lovely little texture and stuff, um, a lot of people in that video were asking for, you know, how to do cloaks that are maybe in colour or different textures and stuff. So in this video I'm going to be doing a red cape or cloak. Um, and we're going to be doing it in the, like a, a bit of a Grimdark style. But first of all, because I know a lot of people don't like the Grimdark style, but what we're going to do, first of all, is get the colours down, get the texture on, and, and that can be followed for people who want maybe more of like a clean-looking cape. Um, and then after, we'll get into how you can grime it up, make it look even a bit more tattered, because obviously it is a bit of a chaos -y cloak, this one. Uh, but you'll be able to follow along the tutorial. And then after this, I've got another video coming out on more of like the cream linen... Uh, with like some cross hatching and stuff uh, but yeah in this video i want to show you some more techniques uh, how we can get some different texture however if you don't want to use this texture method and you quite like the texture method on the leather video there's nothing stopping you using that method and applying it with the red colors or whatever color whether it's green blue uh, to this cape as well and you know this is a versatile thing the colors i'm going to use you don't have to use these you know if you want to spice things up and go for like a different colored cape you'll be able to follow along uh, with getting this texture on uh, but hopefully by the end of this video i'm going to be able to show you some light placements and how we can put some shadows in uh, and do that so well, let's get into it so i am primarily going to be using citadel colors because i think these are the most accessible these are the colors that people tend to use more on youtube but feel free to use whatever colors you like so <clears throat> you don't have to use all these in this like in this order you can start off like here and work up or down whatever you whatever you want to do uh, but the first color is gal vorback red then we're going to be using corn red a bit of mephiston red you don't have to have the air paint it's just i like to use air paints Evil Sun Scarlet, and then we're going to put a tiny little bit of Wild Rider Red. And then later on, I'll get in and show you how we can dirty it up, grime it up, and make it look even more grim dark. So you may, the method that we're going to get into, you may have seen me use in previous years, or actually when I'm painting armor. Um, for this, we're going to use something like a, a stipple dry brush. This is an artist opus. Small artist opus, sorry, these are different to the other brushes. Uh, but any sort of dry brush, you don't have to be this one. Um, or even if you've just got a normal brush and you can do this for the first few layers, then uh, yeah, we're good to go and that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to briefly talk about dilution. Uh, we're going to start off with a Galvar back red. This is going to be for our deepest shadows. You don't have to do this. You can come to this at the end. One thing I will say about red as well, if you're going to be glazing some shadows in or putting some shadows in, a lot of people like to go for black. However, when it comes to putting like shadows into my reds, I do like to use purple or like a purpley colour. I just think it gives it a bit more saturation and contrast. So yeah, dilution. You want it to be quite watery. Now, this won't apply to every single paint, because obviously one of them is an air paint, but you'll be able to work out the dilution for yourself. You know, it doesn't have to be too watery. I'm probably going to add two parts water to one part paint for this. Um, but again, it's hard to say exactly how much water dilution you need, because all paints are different thicknesses and different opacities. So this is just something that you will have to work out a little bit for yourself. But... We are going to water them down just to help build up a little bit of texture. Uh, and basically, this is it. This is this is what we're going to do just to get through all of it. And we're just going to start stippling it on. These first few layers doesn't really matter uh, about being neat and tidy. Um, it's just getting that 
paint on and getting some good coverage. Now it will go on a little bit lighter than most colours, especially when you start moving up because you're like, oh, that red's a bit too bright in that area. But you'll see in a minute when it starts to dry just how much it actually does dull down, especially if you've used something like a black primer like I've used here. Um, I do recommend building it up if you're going to do this sort of method from a black primer. Um, you, you know, you might struggle to get this sort of effect if you're going to prime it in like a, a grey or a white, something along those lines. But we're just literally going on and stabbing all around. Now we're going to be pretty much doing that to build up most of these first couple of layers. Now the reason for that is why we're using this is, as you can see, as it's starting to dry, there's like little areas where some paint's not quite gone on and that's sort of what we want because that's going to start to build up texture and as you start to go up your layers it's going to look like fibers in that cloth um, and to me getting surface variation and textures across your miniature just you know it enhances it and it gives it people something a little bit more to look at and actually separates those parts from like maybe an airbrushed armor um, and yeah it just you know just makes everything look cooler so that's our first layer down and you can see it's almost dry. I am going to jump straight up to corn red now because basically this colour is what I want to be in the shadows and a little bit later on we can actually glaze back some of this colour if you want to darken some of it up. Uh, and again, I do recommend if you do want, you know, if you make mistakes or you do want to go back and forth and darken areas up, the beauty of this is you can actually do that. Um, you know, it's not everything's set in stone to do like the in the GW way where it's like base, wash, layer up, and then final highlight layer. It'll, you know, I think it's bad habit to get into that, and sometimes working back and forth in these colors can um, obviously improve it, and you don't have to feel like you're making mistakes and stuff. But I'm going to try and leave this again we are going to cover most of this uh, and that base layer underneath is going to bring and show some of that texture you can see how light this is going on uh, on this first section but it will dry quite dark but areas where most of the shadow is going to be i'm not too worried about getting this color into there um, especially like dark crevices and i think this is the reason i've chose this little spare cape that i had because it's quite like some are quite flat, whereas this is quite deep recesses and stuff, and it's going to be perfect to show you for like light placement and all that sort of good stuff to build up that contrast. Like I say, this will this method will work on any cape if you wanted to do like a Space Marine captain who's got like a, maybe a little bit more of a pristine cape. Uh, you can do that because it's that texture that's really going to make the difference, and the grim darkness will add a little bit later on towards the end. Now that first layer of corn red has dried, I'm going to go back in with a second layer and the reason I'm doing this is just to show you how we can start to build up the opacity of that one colour and you can do this with all your colours um, because as you start to build up those layers you can still use that one same colour and still get the same effect uh, as you start to build up them because it'll just get more like opacity, more saturation to it on that certain colour. Uh, areas like down here I'm going to leave a little bit in shadow but again don't worry if you go overboard with it because you can glaze some shadows back in. Uh, and even for something like maybe a grim dark cape you know you might not want to go as bright as what I'm going to take it. Uh, you, you know you might be I mean it looks pretty bright on camera here at minute but that's just because of the lighting but in, in person it's not actually that bright but if you want a bit more of a desaturated dark red you might only want to go up to like Mephiston red. So as you can see with just those three passes we've got some nice little texture starting to build up on the cape and again if I wanted to I could go back in with calm red um, and if, like I say if you want the dark cape you could glaze some shadows into it and that'd be you done and dusted uh, but we are going to go a little bit brighter with this just so I can show you some highlights and stuff and then we can knock it back a little bit later. So now I'm going to move on to Mephiston Red. Um, this is not going to require too much watering down because it is an air paint. I'm probably just going to be able to use this straight from the pot. Um, and I, I do like to use air paints for this method because I do, when I'm painting, do like to build up in layers and stuff like that. So that's why I do use a lot of air paints. Um, but for this, I'm just going to concentrate on highlight areas. So, I mean, I know it's a little bit 
funny on this camera with the angle I've got my light for the video but it's basically holding it under a light you can sort of see where the lights start to catch so I'm going to pay special attention up here add a little bit down to the bottom and then maybe a little bit up here and down bottom uh, here again so it's all right we're avoiding these middle areas uh, just to show you the uh, like contrast and light placement that you can get uh, I'm being very lightly just to catch a couple of them raised edges but again we're just building up now there is a bit of a significant saturation jump uh, with this one uh, but that's sort of what we want as that lights coming down um, but like I say it will dull down a little bit into what we've uh, what we've previously put on there and then after this we're going to be just moving to a normal brush um, for the for the final highlights and I'm going to show you how we can uh, keep with this texture method but add some more highlights and texture just using a standard brush now we're going to move up to Evil Sun Scarlet and because we've switched to a normal brush we want to get into the habit of doing this tippy tappy method now it does take a little bit more time to do this uh, you know if you're brave enough to do it with like the dry brush that we've just used or the stipple brush then feel free uh, to do it with that if you think you can cover a bigger area but essentially we're just doing loads of little tiny dots and taps you know take your time with this obviously i'm rushing through it a little bit just for the purpose of this video um but basically we're going to be going around and just adding these little tippy tappy lines now if you want a bit more of a, a scratched effect feel free to like w do some wiggles and squiggles as i like to call them wiggles and squiggles that's the new uh professional terminology <laughs> for doing it uh, and you can you know like, there's nothing stopping you adding some like little scratches and stuff like that again it's all going to add to that texture because fabric does especially if it's absolutely been through wars and it's been caked through the mud and stuff you're going to naturally get little tears and stuff in it uh, but for this i'm mainly going to be concentrating on the tippy tappy method now you might have to build this up in a few layers i have watered it down again a little bit um but you don't have to water it down as much maybe 50 50 for this uh, it just depends on what like again what paint you've got and how strong it goes on we'll just start working your way around i'm just paying special attention to the main highlight sections now uh, with this and then obviously after that we're going to do the exact same thing but with wild rider red uh, as one final like highlight on there but as we're working his way around like you say it goes like you can see how saturated it goes on but it, then you look at the rest of it and it does dull down um but i'll see if i can get a close but you can sort of see the texture that's building up and uh, building up now i'm probably going to do a bit of a jump cut to when we've got through this because again this does take a little bit more time but putting that time and effort in is what's going to really improve your miniature painting and if you've got any you know like if you just want to practice this and get some old cloaks and stuff like this what i've got or some old marines that you're not too happy with you just want to repaint them it's a great way to be able to practice getting this down especially at edges as well like down here where you're probably going to get a little bit more natural fl like flaying in the cotton and the texture uh, but you know you can pay attention to those areas as well towards this bottom because this is where it's probably going to get most most ruffled up i'm going to start and add a couple more of the squiggles and wiggles edge highlight areas like here this is going to be quite in light this little bit what's going up don't just do an edge highlight like a straight line do your tippy tappy method on the edge and get that broken up again it's going to make sure it all blends in with the texture layer that we've just got down and here's a little bit of footage of me just adding the final final highlight of wild rider red it is going to be quite strong but i'm purposely like put a bit more red into shadows than what I need to just show I can show you the way we can knock it back and do the glazes um, but I'm using my squiggle wiggle method I'll probably change the name of that and there's nothing stopping like doing a couple of scratchy lines through into those shadow areas 
uh, as well. But when we get onto our glazers, uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about glazers, that there are tons of videos online. I know I'd mentioned this in my previous leather video. Uh, I'm probably not the one to explain glazing or you know do it justice. Uh, all I know is that I find water. You can use glazed mediums and stuff, but I find the best way uh, is just to add water and just take your time. Let each layer layer dry. Um, but we'll get into you know like make sure you're pushing it if you want to glaze into the shadows like here you'd glaze uh, that way but we'll get into like our best ways to glaze into shadows and stuff a little bit later on but again I've just got my tippy tappy method final highlights and my hand here is really relaxed like I'm holding you can see how far I'm holding brush up and I've literally got my arm rested on the table and I'm just literally doing this with my hand for it and it's such a nice relaxing way to paint for me uh, especially with this method and it helps that randomness at placement yeah, but my hand is so relaxed on edge at desk uh, and I'm just literally tapping away uh, and doing it areas like this especially if you've got like a worn cloak it's good to like add some little highlights where the light would be catching underneath each one of those and again, you can, depending on your cape and how it light placement is, you can take these up higher or lower than, you know, what you desire. Uh, again, you don't have to stick to these colours. Colour experimentation, I do encourage to be able to do that. Um, but the method for doing like a linen cloth way, getting scratches and stuff into it uh, on the next video is a little bit different to this similar but different um, but hopefully from these little video series you can take you know like and again i'm going back to the whole way of you know people are setting the ways and how to paint like oh you've got to do this this way and that that way there is nothing wrong with taking you know like sections from each one of these videos like the it's the, mainly the techniques that's important it's not the colors it's not the way you apply them or in which order you apply them it's the technique that's in my eyes is the important part and you know, like chipping and chopping those techniques like this from the leather video you might want to do this exact same thing but in the leather way or do the stipple first and then do it in the leather way you know there's there's nothing wrong with like bitting and batting and going back and forth between these techniques to achieve a look that you want which is like what i discussed in that video which is like by any means necessary and it's a, like a theory that i always try and push and talk about which is get to where we want to be by using any means necessary so if i want to smooth this out and i want to get my airbrush out now to add some highlights or shadows i can do that i'm allowed there's nothing to say that we've got to do it in that certain way now we're going to move into some glazing so i'm going back to my original gal vorback red color and i'm watering this down with paint just so it's like a nice translucent color and then we can start glazing it into the shadows maybe for this one because my paint pot's a little bit old i might use four parts paint to uh, sorry four parts water to one part paint um, and i'm just going to wipe off most of it on my finger and then we can start to glaze into the shadows now because i'm wanting to push into the shadow areas with this one obviously i can just go straight in that big crevice now this is coming up so i want to be glazing into this shadow area here so rather than come down and push the paint pigment down at the bottom i want to be pushing that paint pigment up because i want this to be the area with the least amount of that shadow paint on and again you might have to add two three maybe four layers um because that's the beauty of glazing like now here there's no point in me glazing upwards because all the shadow area is going to be up there and this bit's going to be lighter so i'm going to glaze down into the shadow areas and again if i were glazing like a highlight color for the highlight i'd glaze up but if you want to glaze black into these areas to darken it up even more again that'll give you a different look um, and a different sort of tone but again it's all about experimenting with those colors so here we are at the final results i have added three layers of glazers to the shadow areas uh, and this is where if you know you want more of a cleany look uh, this is where you'd stop now there's a couple of things i want to talk about before we get in because i have done this a bit more of a grim dark tattered style um 
because it sort of fits the theme of the cape. Now if I were going to do something like a Space Marine, I wanted it to look a bit more like regal and saturated, I'd probably pay more attention and maybe skip the Galvor back red. Uh, just use corn red and start to build that and I'd probably have a bit more Mephiston red here and there in areas but again that's where we can move back and forth and take it to where we want and I probably wouldn't add the scratchy methods I'd just do the the like dots and dabbing because uh, that'll get you your nice little texture but we'll, uh, as you can see here we've got some nice little texture built up and from far away it uh, looks really nice and you've got some of those highlight areas now, if you want to grim dark this up even more, I'm going to show you a couple of ways of how we can add some like weathering and distressing to that cape uh, to make it final and look weathered. So one thing, which is not what I'm going to do for this thing, you could apply a full enamel wash to this, like a brown enamel wash, and get it off, and that'll get you like a right nice dusty cape. However. For this, I'm just going to add a little bit towards the bottom and then we'll go into a couple more bit of weathering and distressing that we can achieve with this. If you don't want to use enamels, get some black and glaze into some of these areas at the bottom of the cape uh, and then we can move on to the other stages. But what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of brown enamel wash. This can be AK brown wash. Uh, dark brown wash or some of the new villainy inks that are coming out which i will have a tutorial on soon um <clears throat> not tutorial sorry a review on soon for those and um, so i've just put a little bit on bottom and i'm just gonna dab and remove a little bit of the enamel and when that's dry you'll get that nice like dusty chalky effect which is going to make it look like it's actually been through uh, muck and mud and some of the dirt's actually gone up as though it's been dragged through the, the fabric's been dragged through the mud now whilst that is drying um, if you want to add, recommend adding some splats so I'm going to get some contrast paint uh, this is wildwood contrast paint but any sort of like dark or greens or anything along those lines uh, you can add some splats and I've just got an old brush and my finger uh, I'm just going to add some little splats. It's not really controlled this in a way, uh, but I'm just going to add some splats to it uh, as though it's some mud or muck has been splashed onto the cape. And again, feel free to experiment with the colours for this. It's entirely up to you. Uh, and then one final splats once that's dried i'm going to add is ak dust effects so now i've got some ak dust effects and again i'm going to splat oh that was a bit too much yeah be very careful with your uh, splats but the beauty of this enamel uh, with it being an enamel is we can get some white spirit or mineral spirit uh, and remove some of those sections that we may have gone a little bit overboard on like this that's the beauty of this because it's not an acrylic we can work backwards and forwards uh, with this. You don't have to apply a varnish if you don't want to, but if you want to add like a, a varnish, you can do that. Now, one last final thing we're going to do to that AK dust effects is I might need a little bit more because they're not as big as what I thought. Uh, but what you can do with the mineral spirits, let's say you've got some little dots and drabs like this is we're going to streak a couple of them so i've just got a little bit of mineral spirits on my brush and i'm just going to in a downwards motion start to add some streaks as though some of that mud uh, has run onto our thing i'm just going to add a couple more a little bit heavier get our mineral spirits and just drag those down as though it's like stepped through some muck or mud um, and some little areas of uh, like streaks down and washed as he's been running through whatever it is and you know it's all again it's all about creating that narrative now one final bit of weathering that you can add and again this is totally optional uh, but it's something i like to add to my miniatures depending on how i've based it whether it's got like a gray base or a brownie like foresty base i go in there and just dust on some pigment powders and this will just add an extra layer of weathering again you don't have to do this but it's just optional and it's you know it's it's as though it's and it, it i always add these to my miniatures like round the legs and stuff as though some of the muck has, has gone up onto 
the actual cape and his legs and stuff like that. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you've got something from it. And if there's one thing I do want you to take away from it, it's all about that experimentation with colours and techniques. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. And if you're not already, please go and check out the leather tutorial. Uh, that one, I really enjoyed it and I got some really good feedback from it. And again, um, if you could hit that subscribe button because I've got some more and different textures on my next video that you can add to like a more like a linen um, cloth and um, we can see where we each like you know it makes it look like each individual strand of uh, the linen and cloth is on your miniature. So guys I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and until next time I'll catch you soon.